Here are the strangest stories about Russian President Vladimir Putin. Number 8. The Super Bowl Ring In 2005, New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft was visiting Russia and met Vladimir Putin during his visit. Kraft tells the story of him giving Putin his Super Bowl 39 ring after returning from the trip. While this was the official story for many years, Kraft eventually decided to tell the real story about what happened to his $25,000 iconic ring. Kraft changed up his story and basically said that Putin stole it. Until 2013, Kraft had let everyone believe he gave the ring to Putin as a gift, but the truth finally came out. While meeting with Putin, Kraft showed Putin the ring. Putin then put the ring on his hand and kept it on. Sometime during their conversation with Putin, still wearing the ring, Putin said, quote, I could kill someone with this ring. Well then. Supposedly, Putin then just suddenly put the ring in his pocket, became surrounded by three KGB agents, and then just left the room. Despite the fact that Putin walked off with the ring, Kraft still wanted the $25,000 piece of jewelry returned. However, he ended up giving up on his quest to get the ring back when the White House called and told Kraft that starting World War III over a Super Bowl ring probably wouldn't be the best idea. Like any true patriot, Kraft did what was best for the country and the rest of the world by pretending that he gave Putin his Super Bowl ring as a gift. Kraft released a statement saying the ring was a gift saying, quote, I decided to give him the ring as a symbol of the respect and admiration that I have for the Russian people and the leadership of President Putin. Basically, Kraft is now down a Super Bowl ring and the only way he's ever going to see that ring again is by visiting the Kremlin Library, where CNN reports the ring is being kept. Number 7. Time is just a concept. You would think that being the leader of the nation, it would make sense that you'd be on time for everything. Well, actually, now that I think about it, if you're one of the most powerful men in the world, everyone's on your time. Putin is apparently very famous for his poor timekeeping with his meetings with leaders around the world. In 2013, Pope Francis made his first visit to Russia. He had a meeting with Putin at a specific time, but you can guess what happened. For 50 minutes, Pope Francis simply waited for Putin until he strolled in. And oh yeah, Putin did the same exact thing when he met up with the Pope again in 2015. Instead, he just did it at the Vatican. I'm sure it's not anything personal against Pope Francis. Really, it's anyone. He once kept the then U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry waiting for him for three hours, leaving Kerry walking around the Kremlin twiddling his thumbs. Putin was also late in his meeting for Queen Elizabeth. Hey, not even a queen is going to stop Putin from being on his own time. How about other presidents? He kept the president of the Ukraine waiting for four hours back in 2012. While the Ukraine president was waiting, guess what Putin was caught doing? He was talking to a passing biker on the street. He'll also be late even when it's entirely inappropriate. Allegedly, he was two hours late for a meeting with grieving parents of children killed in a plane crash. Well, at least he seems like he's not discriminating on being late and giving zero f no matter how important whomever he's meeting are. Number six, still walking. One of the most recognizable things of Putin is his walk. It's very noticeable that he swings his left arm wildly, but he barely moves his right arm. For body language experts and neurologists, this was somewhat of a mystery for years. There were presumptions that he might have suffered a stroke or that he has a genetic disorder. But apparently after years of studying his mannerisms and understanding his background, it's been theorized that the reason for his distinctive walk is because of his time in the KGB where he rose to the rank of lieutenant colonel before retiring at the end of the Soviet Union. As most people are right-handed, it makes sense that they'd keep their weapon on their right side. This allows operatives to be able to draw their gun as quickly as possible whenever the situation calls to use their weapon. Basically, this is a gunslinger's gate that Putin apparently picked up and never let go of. Or maybe he always does have one on him anyways. Something that wouldn't surprise me at all. 5. What money? Everyone knows that money is pretty powerful, but when someone pretty much has unlimited power, well, it makes sense that that particular someone pretty much has unlimited money. Putin has pretty much unlimited power in Russia right now, so how much money does that mean he has? The personal wealth of Putin is nearly impossible to decipher because, I mean, what's to stop him from using any resources that Russia has? Basically, what Russia has access to, Putin has access to. Anyways, that's another discussion, but what's actually rightfully his? It appears that he has a personal fortune, which is somewhere in the range of $40 billion to a mind-blowing $200 billion U.S. dollars. 
a figure that would put him as the richest man in the world. And where's all that money from? The personal wealth of Putin is probably distributed across a secret web of company holdings, real estate, and other people's accounts. It's said that the Russian president is controlling 37% of the oil company Surgut Netskez, 4.5% of the natural gas company Gazprom, and substantial holdings in a commodities trading company called Gunvor. However, there's almost no way to connect Putin to most of the assets he allegedly owns. But again, as leader of Russia, he can basically use any assets as he sees fit, even if it's for his own personal gain. Number four, memes? <laughs> Supposedly, Vladimir Putin and the internet wouldn't exactly be friends if the internet were a real person. In 2010, Putin actually spoke out against the internet. He denied ever using the internet himself and apparently was completely baffled at why Russians would ever use the internet. Hmm, okay. He also dropped this gem by saying, quote, on the internet, 50% is porn material. He hates everything about the internet, except for his own website, where there are pictures of Putin fishing, rafting in a powerboat, taming what appears to be a tiger, playing hockey, driving small cars, and other pictures of him doing other activities. The fact that Putin hates the internet is why, since November 2012, Russia maintains a blacklist used for the censorship of individual URLs, domain names, and IP addresses. The blacklist was originally introduced to block sites that contain, I guess, what you could call normal and appropriate content, such as sites that advocate drug abuse. Uh, later, the law was amended to allow the blockage of sites containing materials that advocate extremism or any other content that may be deemed illegal. Wow, now their censorship is sounding YouTube-like. <laughs> Anyways, Putin sounds like he pretty much has the internet figured out. In one media event, he called the internet a CIA project and that Russia has got to fight for its interests in the project. Yeah. Number three, four-legged creatures. While the Russian president may be a former KGB agent and is an expert in martial arts with a reputation as a fierce political leader, Let's not kid ourselves. Putin's most likely spending all his free time petting kittens and puppies. He has a number of pet dogs, which he occasionally uses to intimidate rival leaders, such as the time when he brought his Labrador Connie to a meeting with Angela Merkel. He also is a huge lover of wildlife animals, as he's actively involved in the conservation of many endangered Russian species, such as Siberian bears or tigers. In 2010, Putin also visited the island of Alexandria Land, an island that's part of the Franz Joseph Land Archipelago in the Arctic Ocean. He went with a group of scientists from the Institute of Ecology and Evolution who were there to study polar bears using satellite transmitters. One transmitter was put on a sleeping bear by Putin himself, but if I had to put money on it, I bet the bear was tranquilized. Anyways, Putin's reputation as an animal lover often gets him animals as gifts from other world leaders, such as the dog he received as a present from Bulgaria's prime minister in 2010. From hugging koalas to handshaking with walruses and feeding elks, Putin's pretty much done it all. During a fishing vacation with Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev, they caught a big fish right in their nets. What happened next? Putin kissed the fish and set it free. Putin the Merciful. Number two, another peak to climb. Vladimir Putin Peak is a mountain part of the Tian Shan mountain range in Kyrgyzstan. The government of the Central Asian nation of Kyrgyzstan decided to name a mountain after Putin, presumably as a way of expressing gratitude to Putin for Russia removing taxes on Russian fuel exports and offering a $200 million developmental loan. The peak, which is over 14,000 feet tall, is in the Troy province in the north of Kyrgyzstan. Putin wouldn't be the first Russian leader to have his own Kyrgyzstan mountain, however. Late President Boris Yeltsin had a peak named after him in 2002. The founder of the Soviet Union, Vladimir Lenin, actually has the tallest one, a mountain that's over 23,000 feet tall. As I had said earlier, political figures have historically given Putin cute four-legged animals, but Kyrgyzstan's prime minister found another gift that'll likely put them in Russia's good graces for years to come. Number 1. Greek Earns Forever In his ongoing quest to prove what an adventurous savage he is, Putin went diving in the Black Sea. Lo and behold, after diving down just a couple of meters, he happened to find two ancient 6th century Greek urns. How convenient! Let's be for real. If Putin is going to be filmed doing anything, it's not that surprising that he's going to be finding something. In video footage of the dive, Putin holds two fragments of the urns and about 
six feet of clear water. However, independent media and Russia's blogosphere thoroughly ridiculed the incident. Eventually, guess what? The remarkable discovery of two ancient Greek urns on the floor of the Black Sea was admitted to be staged by Putin's spokesperson. He said that, of course, they were found in the expedition that happened several weeks earlier. Of course, they were left there or placed there, and he added that it was completely normal. Yeah, it's completely normal for world leaders to stage fake archaeological discoveries. Here's what's next. What you can do for drug cartels is make drugs harder to get and drive up prices. A wall will have the same effect on people smugglers, the coyotes as they're called, who take money to guide people across the border. As crossing gets more complex, professionals get more clients. Coyotes and drug cartels that profit from desperate would-be...